Yo, what's up guys? Yeah, Pokegame here with some more games from the finals of the Smogon Premier League. I know I've been bringing this a lot, but some competitive content that I definitely want to bring to the channel. And uh, yeah, these matches are very important because I believe if ABR wins, or the Wolfpack wins, which is ABR squad, I think that the Wolfpack end up either clutching the week or uh, getting up to the six point, which means that the... Uh, the Raiders need to actually tie with them, and they can't literally win the win, uh, week, which means that there'll be a tiebreaker. It was either that, or at some point it was really close, but we have ABR versus TDK, and then we have BKC versus Soen, so these are two games I actually wanted to catch a lot. Um, anyway, uh, so we see double gash on both teams, so this Coco more than likely not going to do anything, though it does help check uh, Tornadus as well as could be the defogger for TDK's team outspeeding Weaver as well So while it might not look like it's doing anything I mean you can still U-turn versus the team if it does have it though these days Coco is running uh, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Hidden Power, Ice um, And Roost if it's Shuck a Berry um, Metacham goes in versus his squad. I mean it's Metacham so what can you say? You either have to hit it with the uh, Fly EMZ from the Tornadus because your Hurricane isn't going to hit Otua KO every Mon or Oko them. Deancey obviously outspeeds it, knocks out Moonblast and unless TDK is wild and running Bullet Punch, which is like, okay, you have to hard read to the Dancy at Team Preview, you're good. Uh, and Weavile also checks it with its Banded uh, Pursuit and Icicle Crash. Clef maybe for Rocks, and uh, Lando could either be Scarf or um, or Fly MZ. Rock MZ is also an option as well. But yeah, let's get into this matchup because it's actually a long game. So we see Top of Coco lead versus Deancey. This is not a bad lead at all for TDK as it pretty much forces Gastrodon to come in, in my opinion. Uh, and speaking of Gastrodon, I actually like uh, TDK's Gastrodon matchup versus ABR a little bit more just because it hard walls Heat Rain unless it's running Toxic. And whereas it's similar to the last game that we saw, or this Gastrodon, while it goes for Toxic, I mean, he always has Clef as a switch, and just like the last guy. Uh, whereas if this Gastrodon goes for Toxic, he either gets it off on Gastrodon, Tornadus, or Tangrowth, all of which don't appreciate it, uh, unless ABR makes like the uh, Magic Bounce play of going DNC. But we do see Coco uh, versus um, DNC lead, and ABR is actually running Protect in 2018, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it does help him scout Z moves and choice lock Pokemon anyway, uh, but he just goes hard Gastrodon right there, not wanting him to, um, not not wanting to uh, either U-turn or do anything like that. Just getting Gastrodon probably hard, hard walls DNC anyway. But Gastrodon comes out and just throws off a Scald right here. ABR probably scouting for Protect as Tangrowth is going to come out on the next Scald. No burn though. So uh, TDK does have a few switchings, uh, especially with Electric Terrain up. Clefable is a great switching. Uh, if this Tangrowth actually does have Sleep Powder, I can't put him to sleep. And Clef could potentially get up Rocks if it wants to. But Clef actually throws off a Toxic, which I think is a great mid-ground play. One, gets a Toxic off on Tangrowth. Two, if he went Deancey uh, on the predicted rocks, Clefable would be toxic, which means that, uh, one, this Tangrowth actually has Stun Spore, so he can't go for the power anyway, and two, uh, no other status right there could hatch on him. But looking at his team, this was like the only status he had outside of potentially toxic from Gastrodon. So uh, the Clefable does get paralyzed, but Tangrowth does uh, catch that T-Wave, as TDK right here is going to uh, just throw up his rocks, not expecting Deancey to come out. So that's really nice. So not only does he have a rocks, but he also has the Tangrowth on the timer, which is really nice, uh, especially if it's defensive Tangrowth. So any move that Metacham goes for into High Jump Kick should be able to knock him out. So uh, doubles or switches out into Gastron East as ABR went Deancey into um, into Tornadus, and TDK calls the either Defog or double back out into Deancey because he does throw off a Scald right here, uh, catches the Deancey. ABR was trying to uh, bounce back a potential uh, Toxic if he wanted to go for it, and right here we do see uh, another Scald come out. No burn on Tornadus though. So as Tangrowth is going to come out, and TDK actually opts to go for the uh, Earthquake right here, either trying to catch uh, Gastron, pretty much only Gastron, I think. But Clefable can come in, and the interesting thing is, the Ancy is like a 2 HP, so if he actually gets a Brox, that Mon will go down, and at the same time, he can also safely throw off Moonblast. I doubt that TDK wants to stay in here, though, um, because if it is Flying MZ, uh, if it is Flying MZ Tornadus, then that will chunk away at uh, Clefable. And with Clefable being weakened, while he can still deal with something like Gastrodon just because he has a Leech Seed on Celestilla and plus his own Gastrodon, plus, you know, potentially offensive uh, Lando, um, losing Clefable is just hard because it still pivots in on pretty much everything on his squad, uh, but also his Dark Resist. But goes TDK, and ABR reads that really well and goes Heat Rent as TDK is going to go right back out into Gastrodon. This allows um, ABR to get up his rocks, 
as Gastrodon is going to be double out into Clefable really nicely expecting the Tangrowth. And this means that he can either Moonblast predicting Deancey uh, as ABR does make the um, aggressive Deancey play. He didn't lose anything from that play though because Rocks were already up on his side of the field. So I don't think it necessarily matters right here um, that he made that play. And he actually gets the Moonblast roll I believe on Tornadus switching in. So Tornadus is going to go down um, which is really nice because that means when Rocks are up on at least this side of the field, they're here to stay. Uh, though again, Coco and Landers could both have defog. So, uh, he ran reveals the Magma Storm as Gastrodon is trapped now, so it can't switch out. But you can go for Earthquake on the Tangrowth switch. And again, this is really annoying for him to switch into as he is able to get into Fable right here. And the interesting thing is that uh, right now, Dancy could choose to come out if it wants to, as ABR does opt to make that play. Uh, TDK again just going for the Stealth Rock play. Uh, ABR just expecting that and trying to bounce in the back and then going out into Heat Ren right here on the Gastrodon. However, uh, Gastrodon coming in means that Heatran can't do crap to it at all, and this means he can either recover if he wants to, or even double out the top of Coco. Very nice double on his part. Um, just expecting any type of switch right here. Uh, even Tangoff wouldn't matter too much, and this actually allows him to go for Defog with this Coco. So no rocks are up now. He's able to bring in Metacham, and he goes hard Metacham right there. So that Coco going for Defog and not switching kind of leads me to believe that it might be a choice type of Coco. I'm not entirely sure. Um, either that or it just has no momentum gaining move at all, uh, but gets in Metacham right now and Metacham is going to kick something in the- something's gonna die. Something on his team is gonna die. Unfortunately misses the high jump kick on Tangrowth and that is huge because Tangrowth would easily be 2 at KO'd. Um, and I don't think that- I don't think that Metacham would be in high jump- um, pursuit range of Weavile anyway, because this is, uh, def I think this is a defensive or Rocky Helmet? I'm not 100% sure because Tangrowth has not been hit yet, but he did go hard Tangrowth on that. But if he got off the Rocky Helmet damage anyway, it's still, like, if, if Metacham stays in versus Weavile, for example, it would not be in pursuit range. But with that high jump kick miss and rocks, he is in range. So, uh, brings out his top of Coco right now on the Tangrowth as he is going to defog uh, just to sack it, I believe. And this does allow him to bring out his Landorus and threaten this thing with the Fly MC. Excuse me, not Clefable. I'm thinking uh, no, another turn ahead, but gives him Clefable. Uh, as he is going to double out to Landers, expecting the Heat Rain to want to come out. Very, very, very solid play. And Landers is going to go for the SD. So this definitely threatens Tangrowth. So this is pretty much going to mean that um, ABR is forced to sack something. And TDK goes for the sub right here too. So this is pretty fire. Uh, the thing is though, Landers has to go for the attack right now because obviously Deancey is faster. So brings out Weavile right now. And uh, ABR makes a very, very aggressive play and goes right for the Choice Band Pursuit and does so much damage and does another Choice Band Pursuit on the Celesteela, expecting him to want to double out, predicting the Heat Ram. But Metacham is now in, which means that something is about to die. And we do see Rocky Helmet. So, like, this is what I was talking about. Now, Metacham is 100% in range of the uh, Pursuit, whereas before, if it hit it, it wouldn't be in range of Pursuit and it would still be a 50 50. Uh, granted, more than likely in ABR's favor, especially after that really nice Pursuit play. But, um,. Gastrodon going down is great too because now his own Gastrodon has a lot of leeway. Uh, this means that Weavile can come out and Metacham is in range of Choice Band Pursuit no matter what it does. So it is going to be able to get rid of the Metacham right there as Clefable is going to come out. This does mean, however, that Clefable can get up rocks if it wants to. As he doubles out to Landorus though, opting to just go for the Earthquake play. So really, really nice. ABR makes the hard Weavile play. And this covered the Earthquake play because Weavile doesn't necessarily have to be healthy or even alive. It just has to be here to be able to get rid of Landorus. This is a really, really aggressive play. Um, I don't know if it would sub SD Fly MZ Landorus. Uh, Fly MZ actually makes sense with sub because you fly up in the air and you're still behind a sub, so it doesn't matter if your opponent switches out because you still have that sub to get a free attack, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Basically, if you went for a regular fly and he ran came out and he came down on Landorus attacking him, uh, he ran can knock him out, but behind a sub he would not be able to. But that was a really, really nice play. There was no way he was going for his... Uh, Z move that turn anyway, and Weavile gets to come out and can just go for Pursuit and deal with Landers. So really, really nice play. However, this does give Clefable the rocks, and that means that Weavile is no longer a factor in this game at all. It's just Death Water at this point. So uh, Tangoth is going to come out. Really nice, cutting in on the Gastrodon, but at the same time, all it did was give TDK some leftovers recovery. But it did give Gastrodon, or excuse me, Tangoth the uh, Regenerator recovery. So uh, TDK is going to make the Celesteel play as Heat Rain does come out. And at this point, I think that, I feel like TDK is at the advantage even though they have the same number of Pokemon. But mainly because Gastron plus Cafable walls the last two that uh, ABR does have. However, with that Stun Spore para on Clefable, could be bad. Um, ABR just making some nice doubles right here, expecting Celesteela, is expecting Clefable to want to come out. Uh, Celesteela made sense there too. 
as if it ever got off a leech seed versus something, it'd be able to waste. Um, it'd be able to pretty much just stall your one if you want to enforce a switch. So if your Ardell is back out on a Tangrowth right there after revealing Taunt, uh, expecting Gasher on to want to come out, and more than likely just going to double again as uh, he's been doing to get in the heat ran. So um, it's, uh, like I said, a lot better for uh, for TDK at this point because one is Clefable's Magic Guard, so rocks don't matter, and Gasher don't resist the rocks, whereas heat ran is... Um, Neutral, so he runs taking a little bit more, but every single time he gets it in versus Clef, he still gets an extra turn of recovery, and he has Regenerator on Tangro. So, throws off an Earth Power and sees that it does 18% to Gastrodon. Absolutely nothing. As uh, Tangro is going to come back out, and this is like the really long part of the game right now. Um, he's, uh, ABR's goal is to try and weaken this Gastrodon with Magma Storms plus Earth Powers and outplay it with Taunts. Whereas TDK is just going for the safe play because he really has no reason not to. Uh, once Heat Rain goes down, Clefable and Celesteela all beat that Tangrowth. Honestly, anything left can beat that Tangrowth outside of Gastron, which is, you know, the two Pokemon I mentioned. Uh, so he gets in Gastron right now on the Earth Power. Uh, and ABR is going to... Uh, is this where he makes the aggressive play? No, not yet. Not yet. So TDK gets to recover, and basically all the damage that ABR got off did not matter at all. As ABR is going to double right back out into Heat Rain. Look at all these doubles just happening every single turn on the Clefable. And we are going to see the uh, Earth Power come out. Now... Right back and forth, but he's slowly chipping away at Gastron. Now Gastron's at 91%. So um, this still gives him recovery, still gives him heat run as a switch in. As TDK, there's no point in going out, out to Gastron. All he has to do is make the safest play and gets a special attack drop. A little bit bad, um, but ABR takes advantage of that and goes back out into Tangrowth. And again, slowly trying to chip away at Gastron. Though it's not taking any HP at this point, um, he'll be able to do it soon. So. Uh, TDK goes for Stun Sport, uh, excuse me, ABR goes for Stun Sport, trying to catch potentially Celestilla. Also not trying to waste any uh, Giga Drains, I suppose, uh, as Heat Rain is going to come out. Uh, TDK does go for the Moon Blast and gets another special attack drop. And these are pretty, whoop, just smack my mic. These are pretty big because um, a you'll see what ABR does in a few turns or what he tries to do. And because of those special attack drops, he's not able to do it a little bit earlier. But that's the only reason why it's quote-unquote big. Um, though Heeran is taking a little bit of extra health, but the HP of Heeran does not matter at all because Earthquake is going to knock it out regardless. So, that was back on the Gastron as he does go for the Earth Power right here. And um, I believe this is where, is this where he actually makes the play? Nope. Right back on the Tangrel um, as TDK goes for the Earthquake. So, while he's only getting, th that actually did no nothing to Gastron after the two turns of recovery. Uh, he's able to go right back on the Heeran and ABR is just trying to find himself in a position where he can go for Magma Storm and play a little bit more aggressively. So I believe uh, this is where he does it. Goes for Magma Storm, 13 plus obviously the uh, 12, or I guess 13 according to that from Magma Storm, and then goes for Taunt. So that's a really, really nice play because Gastron was pretty much forced to recover. So this is what I was talking about, what ABR is trying to lead up to. He's trying to lead up to uh, Gastron being so weak and, and um, him being able to bring in Tangrowth every single time that Heat Ran just wins the end game. So doubles back out to Heat Ran right now as uh, TDK does go Celestilla, and what this allows him to do is potentially either Magma Storm or Taunt. Uh, actually goes right for the Magma Storm and manages to connect it on Celestilla. I think he expected either, or went for the miss right there, or did not want to go hard Gastrodon. And ABR makes another aggressive play right now, and goes for the Taunt on the Gastrodon. So, uh, Gastrodon still at that small amount of HP. It allows him to go Tangrowth right here, as he is going to go for the Earthquake. And you already know what ABR is about to do. He's about to double right back out on the Heat Ram. Actually, no he's not. Not this turn. He doesn't have to double into Heat Rain that turn, especially because he's in the advantage, or at the advantage right now, uh, because he gets it in for free versus that. So, um, ABR just goes with the double Giga Drain, especially at that point, if, um, if uh, Clefable's forced to pretty much softball right here. So, at that point, if it gets low enough, um, or gets full paired, uh, Tangrowth can technically win anyway, but ABR is going to end up going right back out on the Heat Rain, and he is going to throw off a Magma Storm right here on the uh, Gastrodon, again, connecting it. So, this is really, really 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 important that he keeps connecting these because if he does get the top play right like he does here the next time Gastrodon comes in on magma storm he wins he wins the game because magma storm into the magma storm damage into earth power knocks out Gastrodon. so um abr is gonna make a really nice double one more time out into the uh, uh into the uh, heat ran as tdk makes the clefable play and this is it I think all he has to do is hit this Magma Storm, but unfortunately he misses. So, um, basically he got the 13 off, he got the percentage off, and then Earth Power should be able to knock him out after that. Uh, if my math is not wrong, I mean 18 plus 13 is already over uh, 30 anyway. And then you add another 
12 anyway and then that should be able to deal with the leftovers recovery as well so he should still basically be able to knock him out uh, with earth power at that point but he does miss the uh the magma storm and i mean he hit the other ones so in magma storm we already know it's pretty trash accurate wise but uh that really did suck because um it forces abr into a position where okay he can't let this gash on recover so he has to go for taunt here as uh tdk does get that play right and but at the same time like that game was like he was fighting back this entire time so gets in cleft right now and what he's gonna do is uh, potentially moonblast right now as well as he actually delves back on the gashadon on the heat ran so he's getting that recovery so even if he goes for taunt gashadon is now out of range and tdk um does go for earthquake this turn which means that heat ran is gonna go down and uh, basically that magma storm miss was pretty heartbreaking but i don't judge tdk at all because he did what he had to do he didn't there was no he didn't have to make an aggressive play to win because if he still missed the magma storm which you know it's only seven percent chance to hit he could still win right here but it's not over yet even though tango is paralyzed uh he does still have that one regenerator fodder and or excuse me toxic he does still have that one regenerator fodder and clefable is paralyzed so what can happen here is clefable gets full paired enough to the point where um Tangrowth beats it 1v1 so he is going to sack his Weavile right now just to get the Regenerator. Um, TDK obviously making the best play possible and going for a Softball. Then throw off a Moonblast that turn because he would go down the Moonblast plus Poison. Um, so all TDK has to do is just spam this Softball right now. And that should ensure victory. And the only turn he actually has to go for Moonblast is the turn that uh, Tangrowth is in range. A bit plus Poison. But up until there, uh, I think it was still a well-fought battle on both sides. And I think ABR did what he had to do to win the game but um obviously magnum storm was not on his side and granted they were 50 50s and whatnot but uh with where they're going for taunt going for magnum storm and it was always more of a risk for abr because if he lost that important piece heat rent he would lose the game but tdk in the winning with big cleft plus gastrodon gastrodon getting some love this spl which is good it's a really good pokemon um and yeah let's go ahead and go into the next game so now we have bkc versus solon so uh, right here i believe tdk is a raider and ABR is obviously a whoop pack, so TDK ends up getting a win for them. Now we have BKC, who is uh, a raider himself, and Solon, who is part of the wolf pack. So, uh, uh, so, sorry, commentating. Blender's asking me for a favor. <laughs> anyway, we have BKC versus Solon. Sorry about that. He was just like, he's passing some teams over Black and White Cup, so I gotta, I gotta help him out. But, uh, so we see, um, Sam Balance right here with Spikes and Alakazam, you know, just standard archetype, uh, probably Scarf Mian, uh, Mian Chao. And then we see no Spikes on BKC's side. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty surprising. You guys know I love BKC. BKC is probably my favorite, um, my favorite guy to watch play Pokemon. And not seeing a Skarmory on his side or Feral Thorn, this is interesting to me, wow. But he has a sand offense right here with more than likely uh, Mold Breaker Drill, I want to say. Or is it Sam Force? I don't, I don't remember. But anyway, let's get into it. Um, honestly, it looks really tough for Kevin to break through uh, because Caldeo is all, always um, countered by Amoongus. To an extent, if it, expects, uh, if, if it gets burnt by Scald and then Stealth Wrecker up to an extent. Uh, so Caldeo can put in a lot of work versus him. Uh, Mian Shao isn't too much of a threat considering he has Amoongus plus um, Landers to pivot into it. Uh, Zam gets Pursuit Trap by... BKC's T-Tar, uh, Heat Ran beats the, this core. Potentially, though, Gliscor just looks like a giant threat, especially if it's subtoxic. Subtoxic Gliscor looks like it just wins versus Kevin. Or even an SD set is really scary because he all he has is Caldeo uh, to beat a 1v1 and HP is from Lanaris. But uh, then again, it is 70 base HP. These sprites are huge. So we see a Heat Ran lead versus Among Us. Great lead on BKC's part. Goes right for the Magma Storm and misses, unfortunately, on Soul Wins. Uh, Tyranitar, he is going to go hard into Excadrill right there as it is a Mold Breaker variant as he goes for Rocks. And this allows uh, Kevin pretty much control. Um, Kevin could go for the Earthquake right here and potentially knock out Titar or go for Rabbit Spin. He actually opts to go for Rabbit Spin as Solon makes a pretty uh, aggressive early on play and goes right for Super Power and down goes the Excadrill. So Kevin lost his Excadrill, which I think was very, very important. I'm assuming it was just a leftovers Rabbit Spin, maybe. Um, but that was really. Or even, even Scarf is an option, but that was really important because uh, that Mon could always spin versus Skarmory and pretty much beat it 1v1, especially if it's Taunt Skarmory and not Brave Bird, because um, there's more Rabbit Spin than there are Spikes. But 
Leonard's is going to come out. This allows Leonard's to potentially go for Earthquake or U-Turn. Goes for U-Turn because of the minus one. Um, and it is Rocky Helmet Skarmory. So that was actually the only set that could actually beat the extra 1v1. But this allows him to bring in his T-Tar. Goes for the Magma Storm this time. Or excuse me, his Heat Ran. Goes for the Magma Storm this time connecting on T-Tar. And um, lets him weaken the uh, Tyranitar right there. Uh, in fact, if the Magma Storm hit the first time, this might have been a 2 hit KO with Earth Power. Uh, but Kevin goes for the next Earth Power as Tyranitar is going to opt to get up the rocks as opposed to knocking out Heeran. I mean, he has a lot, and it's already in Alakazam range anyway, and he literally gets to bring out Gliscor for free, get his Toxic War activated, and knocks him out the Earthquake. So uh, right now, Solon turn 8, he's up 5-4, and it looks like he has the advantage. So it is Protect Gliscor, which is really, really important as well, because that easily, easily wears down Caldeo with the spikes and stuff. But we do see leftovers on Caldeo. So uh, we are going to see a Scald come off on the Amoongus right now. And um, leftovers can mean it's subcom mine uh, or some other variant, but uh, Kevin is going to go out into his own Among Us as Sleep Fodder. And you guys know about black and white sleep turns. Basically, if you're asleep, if you switch out, your sleep turns, uh, you're asleep forever. So you got to break your turns of sleep and wake up before switching out. But uh, Gliscor is going to come out. We saw Protect on Gliscor, which means it could be Subtoxic, uh, could be Toxic Protect Earthquake anything like that, but Kevin is going to go Landers right now, and this does allow him to potentially HP ISD Gliscor as he just goes for U-Turn. I mean, between Regenerator and Intimidate, he can always chip away at that uh, at that Landers, but it does allow him to potentially go among these at a point. So, Skarmory, or Captain comes out on Skarmory, um, BKC is just going to throw off a Scald. If the Skarmory was Brave Bird, that'd be really bad right there, but at the same time, if he lost Skarmory, it's a little bit scarier for Landers versus his squad. Uh, but Kevin does not get the burn on the next turn on the Amoongus, as he is going to be able to go out to his own Amoongus. And again, there's like no sleep turns to burn. Uh, if you don't stay in with Amoongus, if you don't stay in with a, sl a slap Pokemon in uh, black and white, it's not waking up. So, um, though Amoongus can't potentially stay in on Gliscor if it wants to. As you see, the Earthquake does not do too much. He does manage to get the wake right there. Uh, so this is pretty crucial, I guess. Um, just a little bit of chip on Gliscor. Not really too, too crucial, though it means that he at least gets to attack and doesn't have to be sleep fodder every single turn. So... Uh, just going to go for the double Gage Drain. Get enough Regenerator to be able to live the next hit. Uh, also puts Gliscor in range of HP Ice from Landorus. And this does allow him to go out to Landorus right now. Uh, assuming Gliscor is going to want to go for the Earthquake again. Or even to Protect. But yeah. So this gives uh, um, him a free switch in the Caldeo. Because he's more than likely going to want to go for Skarmory. Or uh, go for Protect with, um, with Gliscor. Either Warrior is a good play. And finally on this squad, I believe Kevin is going to be able to burn the Among Us. Yep. So he gets the burn, and obviously burn is different than in the generations we have now because it actually does 12%. So that burn will be wearing down the Among Us. And Kevin reveals the Protect on his Caldeo, which is really interesting, especially on a team with no spikes or T-spikes. But that's really cool because it lets him get extra turns of damage on Among Us, which might be crucial later on. So he goes uh, to his own Among Us on the Giga Drain, and because uh, someone's Among Us is burnt, um, technically BKC can do about 14% with Hidden Power, and or 21%, wow. Uh, that damage on his own Among Us is actually pretty, pretty crucial because Caldeo offensively is a threat to Solon's team. Um, obviously, he does have this defensive check in Among Us and an offensive check in Alakazam, but doubles up to Caldeo right here, expecting him to want to go Gliscor. And really, really nice play because it puts BKC in a very, very solid position offensively um, as Solon is going to go Zam. Um, so this does allow him to break the potential Focus Sash on Zam right there. And Kevin has like one switch in, which is T-Tar. <laughs> Honestly, uh, Solon does predict that very nicely and goes for the Focus Blast, does a ton, and um, he's going to go for the Signal Beam in return, not wanting to risk the next Focus Blast right there. And that's actually going to cost him his uh, Alakazam. I, I understand that play, though. You want to weaken it for Gliscor anyway. Um, Mian Xiao's U-Turn, so it makes sense. But Mian Xiao is going to come out and go for U-Turn. Uh, Kevin is actually going to keep his Tyranitar alive. It's still potentially faster than Skarmory, so it could still get up rocks, which could be crucial. As Amoongus come, or as, as Skarmory comes in and um, BKC decides to just throw off a hidden power, uh, which actually might put Skarmory in range of the... Um, of the Scald, but Skarmory does reveal the Taunt, which means that it's Taunt, Roost, Whirlwind, and Spikes. So he gets in Caldeo right now on the um, on the Roost, allowing him to throw off a Scald right here. Uh, and this is going to be really crucial because uh, if he burns Skarmory, he gets a crit and a burn on Skarmory, which is super, super crucial. Uh, as Tyranitar is going to come out, Tyranitar is going to go down. And this means that Skarmory will go down uh, that turn to the burn. So that was really big. Amoongus is going to come out, though, and... Um, Kevin is fighting back, man. So Amoongus actually has Protect, too. 
<laughs> Among Us actually has Protect too. Kevin with the Protect Sand, man. I'm surprised you didn't bring Spikes. I really am. Uh, just based on the team. But there's a lot of guys going to come out. And um, what biggest he can do, he has two options here. He can either just Giga Drain to wear down the Glyscrow Skull, which he probably already is in range. Or he can go Landorus on the pot uh, potential Earthquake and just throw off HP Ices. Uh, though Solwyn does reveal the Ice Fang right there. So it's Ice Fang Protect. Uh, but this does allow Caldeo to come out right now and throw off a Scald as Among Us is going to come out. So it goes for that Scald on the Among Us coming in. Um, and Kevin pretty much does what he has to do right here. So first off, uh, he actually throws off another Scald expecting uh, Solwyn to want to make the Mian Xiao play uh, on the, uh, predict the Protect. And goes for Protect right now. As if Mian Xiao went for a high jump kick right there, it would go down to recoil. So this allows Kevin to actually stay in right now and throw off what I believe to be a secret sword. Because it does more to Among Us. Yep. And he gets a crit on the uh, Among Us coming in. So that's really big because it forces Among Us to switch. And it also means that he can go for Scald right here and pretty much pick off a KO. So right now, he picks up that KO on Mian Xiao, which means that uh, Solon does not have a faster Pokemon than Caldeo on the team. Goes for Protect right now. And at this point... Um, because Spikes and Stealth Rock are up, it does 12, and it then does, um, I think it puts Keldeo in range of Sand, if I'm not mistaken. Or, like, I'm pretty sure it puts Keldeo in range of Sand. So, Keldeo actually has to stay in right here. So, Scald is, or, so Spore is a no-drawback play. Either that, or it puts in, like, at, like, 2%, which I still think is in range of Sand. Um, but, BKC goes for the double protect, and that's pretty much the play he had to make to try and win right here. So, Kevin knew what he had to do. Obviously, it's super lucky. Super lucky, but he's able to throw off a secret sword right there. That's going to be able to knock an Among Us, and Kevin did exactly what he had to do uh, to put himself back in uh, position. This is obviously really fortunate. A crit on Among Us earlier on really put him in that position, but by the way, shout out to the office. And Keldeo is actually able to bring it back, so uh, wow. That was, this is why I like watching Kevin play, because he plays to his outs and he also plays well. Um... Obviously, no disrespect to Solon. I love Solon too. He's my boy. But uh, and we do acknowledge the fact that that double protect and the skull crit and all that really did put him in that position. Like, there's no denying that. But uh, he did what he had to do to win the game. And it was uh, the Smogster chat was going crazy when it actually happened. But thank you for watching. I'll definitely. Um, well, let me explain to you guys what happened. They ended up tying because my boy won the doubles game. So they ended up tying, and there will be a tiebreaker. I think it's ABR versus TDK. Um, Solwyn versus Roscoe and BKC versus Updated Candle, if I'm not mistaken. That should be the tiebreaker. So I'll definitely be bringing that towards you guys if you guys would like to see that. Uh, thank you for watching, of course. Hope you guys all enjoy. I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye, my friends.